In my job, I get to speak with many different customers, and I frequently will ask them uh, if they have a code signing problem. And I usually hear one or, one or two answers. First answer is, well, we, we aren't a software company. We don't deliver code that's used by a third party, so we don't need to code sign. And uh, when, when I hear that, I, I just simply ask, well, do you develop code that's used internally? Maybe it's for your accounting system or your logistics for order entry or things like that. And if they say yes, then they are a software company. They're developing code. And you're opening yourself up to risk if you aren't code signing those items to where anyone can come in and modify them. Second set will say, well, we don't have a code signing problem, or how would we know that we have a code signing problem? So I love that answer because it allows me to start asking lots of questions. I'll ask, how many code signing certificates have, has your team issued over the past year? And if they say one or two, I'll ask, well, what happened after you issued that code signing certificate? And usually what they tell me is, well, we gave it to some development team and you know, they're using it, but we aren't sure what's happened since then. Now think about it. They've given this development team a code signing certificate and a private key, and they have no visibility into how it's being handled. They don't know on what machines those private keys are installed. They don't know what build servers are being used to build a software that does the code signing. They don't know what code's being signed. That's a huge risk for an InfoSec uh, team. I'll also, also ask, do you have policies in place that specify who needs to approve certain uh, code signing certificates, who's authorized to use certain code signing certificates? And occasionally they'll say, yes, we have a manual. You know, Here's the manual. It's 50 pages long. I'll ask, well, how do you know they're following if it's just a written manual? And they don't have a good answer for that. But I guarantee you that development teams are not following that manual because they're under pressure to deliver software very fast. And the first thing that they usually bypass are security protocols. If you are issuing code signing certificates, I ask them, how do you know what's happened to those code signing certificates and the private keys after you've given them to a development team? How do you know where they're stored? How do you know what code they're being used on? And they really have no good answer for that. And that's a really risky situation. And if, if it's a team that's responsible for managing the risk of your organization, I would be very concerned about not knowing those answers. If tomorrow a third party comes to you and they say, we found malware on the internet and it's signed with a legitimate code signing certificate from your company, what would you do to start tracking that down? If you don't have visibility, if you don't have control over who signed what, how are you gonna do that? And who's gonna be responsible for that problem? So it's really important as you think about these issues that you recognize that you potentially have a code signing problem, you have risk around code signing, and it's all about securing the code signing process.